Hi guys, welcome to the new section, Client Side Attacks with Metasploit. In this section, we will look at the topics such as Need of Client Side Attacks, the MSF Venom Utility, Social Engineering with Metasploit. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with Need of Client Side Attacks. In this video, we are going to see how to exploit the target system if it is not in the same network as that of the attacker. In the previous section, we used the MS08067 NET API vulnerability in our target system and got complete administrator level access to the system. We configured the value of the R host variable as the IP address of our target system. Now, the exploit was successful only because the attacker's system and the target system both were on the same network. This scenario was pretty straightforward as shown. Now, consider a scenario shown in this diagram. The IP address of the attacker system is a public address and he is trying to exploit a vulnerability on a system, which is not in the same network. Note, the target system in this case has a private IP address and is NAT'd behind an internet router. So, there is no direct connectivity between the attacker's system and the target system. By setting our host to 89.43.21.9, the attacker can reach only the internet router and not the desired target system. In this case, we need to adopt another approach for attacking our target system, known as client-side attacks. As we have seen earlier, if the target system is not in the same network as that of the attacker, then the attacker cannot reach the target system directly. Some of the techniques for delivering the payload to the target system are First, the attacker hosts a website with the required malicious payload and sends it to the victim. Then, attacker sends the payload embedded in any innocent looking file, such as doc, PDF or XLS, to the victim over email. After that, the attacker sends the payload using an infected media drive, such as USB flash drive, CD or DVD. Now, once the payload has been sent to the victim, the victim needs to perform the required action in order to trigger the payload. Once the payload is triggered, it will connect back to the attacker and give him the required access. Most of the client-side attacks require the victim to perform some kind of action or other. Let's break the word shell code into shell and code. In simple terms, a shell code is a code that is designed to give a shell access of the target system. Practically, a shell code can do a lot more than just giving shell access. It all depends on what actions are defined in the shell code. For executing client-side attacks, we need to choose the precise shell code that will be part of our payload. Let's assume there's a certain vulnerability in the target system. The attacker can define a shell code to exploit that vulnerability. A shell code is a typically hex encoded data and may look like this. Now let me answer you some of the regularly encountered questions. What is a reverse shell? A reverse shell is a type of shell which, upon execution, connects back to the attacker's system, giving shell access. What is a bind shell? A bind shell is a type of shell which, upon execution, actively listens for connections on a particular port. The attacker can then connect to this port in order to get shell access. What is an encoder? The MSF Venom utility would generate a payload for us. However, the possibility of our payload getting detected by antivirus on the target system is quite high. Almost all industry-leading antivirus and security software programs have signatures to detect Metasploit payloads. If our payload gets detected, it would render useless and our exploit would fail. This is exactly where the encoder comes to rescue. The job of the encoder is to obfuscate the generated payload in such a way that it doesn't get detected by antivirus or similar security software programs.